Welcome back to Behind the Box. Today, we're bringing you a review of a prototype of Chronicles of Crime sent to us by Board Game Exposure and Lucky Duck Games. Now, in full disclosure, we haven't paid for this game, but it won't impact the quality of the review that we give you. So, Chronicles of Crime is sort of the next evolution on the mystery sort of solving puzzle game, like... Um, Sherlock Holmes, Consultant Detective, things like that, mm -hmm. where it's an app-driven game where it's all cards with different pictures on of different characters and locations and uh, evidence and clues, and you have to solve these mysteries. Now, in the prototype we were sent, we were given a tutorial, and the uh, first mission, in total, is about an hour and a half of yeah. gameplay for it. The actual full game will have a lot more to it. And everything that you'll be seeing now is prototype copy, so subject to change, although I think the art is kind of spot on to where it'll be. It might just be small tweaks. Yeah, it's really good. I don't, you know, there's not much that I would say they'd need to change about the art. No, yeah, the art's really, really nice. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot. Um, the cool thing is about this game is, and to me what makes it a step above other mystery solving games, is it can evolve and it can change as you play yeah so you'll start off by being told this person's been killed in this location go and question the person that found the body so you'll do that and they'll say oh well i know that i know this person they're a regular here they were friends with this person you go and talk to them and then they will tell you information and then you can go back to the initial person and it gives you then like new information that yeah. you can work with yeah whereas in like Sherlock Holmes you can't revisit locations once you found out other pieces of information because it's text it's gonna stay the same yeah this actually changes yeah another really cool thing to this game is it has a virtual reality section so when you actually go to the crime scene you go on your phone and you click search for clues and you can actually look around like this with your phone and view in like a 3d space the scene and you can actually describe what you see to the other players and they'll find evidence cards so you'll say i found a knife a bloody knife so yeah. they'll, they'll they'll pick the weapon i've also found uh, a, a purse i've found a book mm -hmm. i found a, like a toy of some sort <laughs> and so you'll describe these things and they have to find them and that's when you can then scan them and, and determine are these actual clues because everything has qr codes on them mm -hmm. all these cards have qr codes and so as you find more evidence you can, like I said, revisit potential suspects and say, well, we found this. And then they'll give you new answers and new information. Mm -hmm. So cool. Such a cool system. And it, yeah. it really is the next evolution of app integration into board games. I love it. Yeah. I think the theme really does work, too, because um, time passes. So yeah. you're, you're measured in time. The longer you spend looking at clues every, and yeah, every scan asking you make about things. Passes time. Yeah the time will pass faster. And so it might get into evening time and the people that were at a location before might not be there anymore or there might be new people there now. Yeah. And so that's really interesting. It, it feels like it, it could be a video game, but yeah. they put it physically onto your table for you. Yeah, so, and you were saying to me that, that it felt more immersive almost yeah. because it's like you're looking at, like imagine, like you show the front of the box. Yeah. It's a policeman stood in front of a wall of evidence and he's trying to figure stuff out. And you feel that way. You're looking yeah. at it and you're like, how do these people link up? And what's this evidence got to do with it? Like mm -hmm. there's something to do with that, but we just need yeah. to find the other links. And yeah, yeah it's really, really cool. Um, another positive I would say to it as well is that it's challenging. Yes. It is a, it's not straightforward. I don't feel like we just stumbled through. Yeah. And because you can't just scan everything because it pushes that time, and that leads me into another really good positive, is the game prompts you. When you reach certain times and milestones, you'll get a call like from the, the chief, like your chief, and he'll say, we've just heard from the kidnapper, for example, and they've given you three hours. Yeah. And so you can't just talk to everyone about every little detail yeah. and just try and steal as much information as possible. You need to really plan ahead mm -hmm. and logically think about how these things connect. But it works well with the story too because it's kind of an incentive to push you forward to move yeah. faster. It's not just like, oh, you've only got this much time left. You know, yeah. it's it's a it's thematic. It works with the story of the game. Yeah, it also doesn't drag. Like like I said, it takes about an hour and a half to do both the tutorial and mission one. That's all that's available right now mm -hmm. in the prototype. Um, but it didn't feel like 
we spent 90 minutes doing it. It felt like 20 minutes went by. Yeah, because you're fully active in it yeah. the whole time. You're always thinking. Yeah. Um, it's really cool. I also, the last sort of positive to it is, unlike other games of this mystery sort of genre, when you're done, it doesn't give you all the answers. So in Sherlock, when you read the end part of that, it tells you how Sherlock figures it out in the quickest possible time. Yeah. This game doesn't do that. It might do in the full version, but in the prototype so far, it doesn't do that. And so you, we've actually discussed revisiting the game and we figured out a lot of it, but we missed a couple of pieces and we don't know where we missed them. Yeah. And so we're considering going back and replaying it, even though we know the answer, but just playing it differently and trying to figure out where did we mess up. Yeah, was there which, something at the scene of the crime that we just didn't see? Yeah, which other games like this don't offer you that incentive to want to replay. Now, there's not a lot of replayability, obviously. No. Once you know the answer, you know yeah. the answer, which is kind of the first, I don't want to say negative, because to us, that's not a negative. It was a, a full experience. Sherlock and other games like that, they're full experiences. Yeah. And I'm happy with the investment we put in. Yeah. This game would be the same when when you have the full version of it. You mm. do the whole thing and it's fully completed. I wouldn't be like, well, that was a waste of money because we can't play it again. Yeah. Other people will view it that way, though. So that's why I put it in this sort of negative space. But having said that, yeah, it's, we're fully aware that there'll be limited plays that you can have of it. But because it uses this app, even though the game itself stays the same, the cards are all the same, because it uses the app, you can kind of build new stories, you know? Yeah. So I'm imagining that they will release more and more content for it, more stories for it, more mysteries. Yeah. So you might still have like the same cards, but they'll mean different things because it will be a new mystery to solve. Yeah, and there's kind of an endless amount of possibilities with that because each card can just be like in one game one uh, character picture might be the mm -hmm. victim the person that we find has died in the next one they might be the killer yeah in another one they might just be someone that just helps you out a little bit and there's mm -hmm. a little bit of information so it doesn't really change much mechanically but just that uh, those actual tweaks you know it can kind of open it up to being yeah. you can't just guess what everything's going to be yeah yeah Okay, so maybe we should concentrate on some things that we listed as negative. Yeah, I've mentioned the limited plays. Like I said, we don't really yeah. class that as a true negative, but to some people it is. Another one that I feel fits that is it is heavily based on needing an app. Yeah. So you can't play it without. It just wouldn't work. If you don't have like um, a phone or... Or if you're just someone that doesn't like the idea of doing yeah, that. Yeah, then that won't work for you. Yeah, again, for us, we're okay with that. We like app integration when it's done mm -hmm. well and we feel this does it very well but yeah some people won't they'll like the cardboard to just stay cardboard so. <laughs> another thing is um it came with these like 3d glasses that you stick onto your cell phone um i liked that i found that those actually helped me see the clues better because yeah. it kind of magnified things for me but if <sighs> It, I, I wasted time be, because when you click, you know, I'm in the scene now, you only get limited time and then you spend all this time trying to get it right so that you can, you know, you've got the right angle to see. Yeah. I wasted a lot of time doing that. So even though it's helpful to use those glasses, it's unhelpful because it wastes time. Yeah, some, someone with bad eyes as well, they might struggle with that. Now on yeah. the, the flip side, you don't have to do that. You can just select just to look at it through the phone and it's just like a panoramic picture. But I think everything's too small then. It is small. You can zoom in. So again, it kind of helps you out a little yeah. bit. And it just it just offers that alternative. Mm. But it, again, if you've got bad eyes and neither of these options work for you, then it kind of excludes you from the game because it's not just something that you read like in Sherlock. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that, that can, again, depending on your perspective, that can be like a negative to the game. Um, Another thing we noticed um, yeah. in the app, is just a few spelling errors. Like for example, um, the word letter was written later. Yeah, there was a couple of things like that. Now, again, just with it being on Kickstarter, it's gonna be having these things ironed out. Yeah, this is prototype. You know, a lot of the components are gonna be mm -hmm. improved. Hopefully as well, the spelling errors will be fixed uh, in the actual app for the full release. I would expect so. Hope so, yeah, yeah I know that uh, there's been a couple of games similar to this that have been on Kickstarter, have done really well, and then they've still had bad spelling errors. So hopefully that's something that they've considered is getting mm -hmm. someone to maybe go through and proofread and edit the text side of it. Hopefully. I, we don't know. We're not working on the actual <laughs> Kickstarter. But yeah, that's just one small thing that we found that was a negative in the prototype, but will probably be fixed for release. 
So, yeah, um, that's kind of everything. I Final thoughts for me is that I'm really interested. Yeah. I'm intrigued. It's a cool inter interaction with the game and the app and integration as well of app to board game. I so. agree. I agree. I really like the idea of a game being able to live beyond the cardboard. Yeah. You know, have have I can have more of this. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, the Kickstarter is running right now, so um we'll leave a link in the description down below. So go check it out. There'll be other videos as well from other members of Board Game Exposure. So I think I'll probably link all of them down below as well so you can check them out, get a better understanding for if this game is going to be for you and decide on if you want to back it or not. Um, I'll leave links to Board Game Exposure as well, the Facebook page. As always, I always say they're fantastic people because they really are. <laughs> so check them out. And our social media will be down below as well. But yeah, until the next one, we'll see you soon. See you. Bye. Bye. Sorry, I felt like I had a yawn. Okay, thank you. Sorry. <laughs>